you have a Rocketbook erasable notebook or are thinking of picking one up, you're probably aware that the only pens you're supposed to use are the friction line from Pilot. The friction erasable products use heat sensitive ink that becomes transparent above 60 degrees Celsius then reappears when cooled below negative 10 degrees Celsius. This gap in the disappearing and reappearing temperatures is what allows the ink to function properly. So when you erase the ink on a regular page, the friction eraser isn't actually removing it from the page, instead it's just heating it up until it disappears. So if you experience disappearing notes in your notebook, or the pens seem to have lost their ink after a day in a hot car, you can always try cooling them down in the freezer to see if it comes back. But it's not the thermal properties of the friction line that makes them uniquely suited to work with Rocketbook. Instead, the polyester composite pages of the Rocketbook were designed to work specifically with the friction ink's washability to allow them to be erased time and time again, provided you do so within 30 days of it drying. Because of this, it's easy to feel limited when it comes to Rocketbook writing utensils. So I started looking into all the friction line has to offer, and there's actually quite a few different pens, markers, and highlighters to choose from. So I reached out to Rocketbook, and they were kind enough to send me one of each of the different friction products that are easily found on Amazon for testing. And after a few weeks, here are my thoughts. All of the friction pens use ballpoint mechanisms to deploy the ink, and you have the option of 0.5mm, 0.7mm, or 1mm tips, though I wasn't able to get a hold of a 1mm tip for testing because they're harder to come by. But I'm not sure that I would want to go larger than 0.7mm anyway. When I got my first rocket book, I found the thicker 0.7mm lines to be more appealing, but I've since come to prefer the thinner 0.5mm tips. Because the polyester composite pages don't absorb the ink the same way traditional paper does, the ink pools on the page as it dries and can look a little blotchy at times. The more ink, the more pronounced this effect is. This also impacts the drying time of the friction products. In my testing, the 0.5mm tips dried in about 11 seconds while the 0.7mm tips took about 16 seconds. This may not seem like a big difference, but I've all too often flipped a page too quickly and found the ink smudging when I returned, so every second does help. With this in mind, the two most popular forms of the pens are the standard ballpoint with detachable caps and the ball clickers that deploy with a press of the clip. Both styles have thicker 10 and 11 mm grips that feature interchangeable tapered ballpoint cartridges that come in a variety of colors beyond the standard red, black, and blue. Friction also sells point pens that come in a thinner 8.7mm grip and feature a straight 0.5mm tip. In my experience, I didn't notice a real difference when writing with the point pens versus the 0.5mm tapered ball series, so unless you prefer holding a thinner pen, I would just pick up whatever's easier to get refills for. And it's worth noting that the refills can be used with either case style, so feel free to mix and match. Speaking of which, Friction also offers a more professional looking pen that they call the LX. These will run you between 20 and 35 US dollars, so you'll have to decide if it's worth it, but the silver version has become my pen of choice to keep on hand when I'm running into meetings. If you're looking to brighten things up a little bit, Friction also offers 0.7mm ballpoint color sticks that have a thinner 8.5mm grip. I also found that the color sticks wrote a little thinner than the standard 0.7mm refillable cartridges, but this could be because of how I hold the thinner pen when writing. Unfortunately, the color sticks don't use refillable cartridges, so I wouldn't recommend using them for the majority of your note taking, but they do make a nice addition if you want to add a little color to titles or drawings. Scans of my tests with the ballpoint pens turned out pretty well, with sufficient contrast and clarity. Though the lightest grey, green, and yellow color sticks did struggle to come through, so you may want to avoid those colors. Alternatively, you could use one of the friction markers. These come in two sizes, the standard color series markers, as well as the new thinner 0.6mm fineliner series. As you may expect, page absorption and ink pooling effects were more pronounced with the markers compared to the pens. In my testing, the fineliner surprisingly only took about 11 seconds to dry probably because they do a good job of distributing the ink thinly on the page, but the standard color markers took about 22 seconds to dry, the longest of any friction product I tested. Of course, this will depend on what you're drawing and how much you pool the ink. Generally speaking, the markers appear a little more washed out than they would on regular paper, and blotching is a bigger issue than with the pens, so you may want to consider using the colored ballpoint pens instead if they suit the task. This is reinforced when you scan your notes with the Rocketbook app, 
The blotching of both the fine liner and color markers becomes more pronounced, and at times can look much worse than in person. And that leaves the highlighters. They come in two versions, the light and light pastels. Both have the exact same form, featuring a thick 9.7mm grip and a chisel tip, with the only real difference being how saturated the colors are, so choose whichever you prefer. All in all, the highlighters work okay with the Rocketbook pages, provided you let the pen ink dry before highlighting. But you'll have to use a lighter touch than you would with normal paper to avoid smudging the pen ink under the moisture and pressure of the chisel tip. Beyond this, my only real issue is that the chisel tips aren't quite wide enough to cover my handwriting in a single pass. This may not be an issue for you, but if it is, you have to be careful not to instinctively double pass the highlighter because the overlapped area smudges quite easily. You'll also want to factor in that it took about 20 seconds for the highlighter ink to dry in my testing. Again, not a trivial amount of time if you're trying to keep up with class notes. Additionally, I find that highlighting lightens the pen ink. Though you could always rewrite your lettering later or over top of a dried highlighted section if you don't find that to be too impractical. Once scanned, the additional saturation of the light highlighters really shows compared to the pastels. While I prefer the look of the pastels in person, they get washed out by the Rocketbook scanner's contrast enhancement. Regardless of which friction products you end up choosing for your Rocketbook, they all come with erasers. But as I demonstrated in my last video, you want to be careful with using these on the polyester composite pages because they can remove the coating that allows the ink to adhere to the pages properly. Given this, the one friction product I don't recommend you pick up is the dedicated eraser. Other than that, which combination of pens, markers, and highlighters you choose will really depend on what kind of notes you need to take. Personally, I primarily use my rocket books as a bullet journaling agenda or for written notes and technical sketches, so I lean more towards the pens for their precision than the markers or highlighters. So I may end up incorporating the color sticks a little more now to help brighten up my agenda or for distinguishing between different parts of a drawing. Having said that, I'll leave links to any of these friction products as well as some of the rocket books in the description below in case you're interested in buying something that you've seen and helping to support this channel. Otherwise, I'd love to hear about how you use your friction pens with rocket books, so please consider leaving a comment down below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.